This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service, Nebula. Hey, happy Friday. This week I'll talk about why Nvidia's acquisition of ARM could be quite problematic. I'll explain what Facebook has learned from Google Glasses failure when making their own AR glasses. And I'll also talk about Oracle's acquisition of TikTok. And this is also the 20th week of us making tech knowledge quizzes. So we have two versions this week, one regular one where you can test your tech knowledge and two, a bonus hardcore edition where we took the hardest questions from all the previous tests and put it into one quiz. They both link down in the description. So check them out and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week will be NVIDIA acquiring ARM for a whopping 32 billion US dollars and creating one of the world's most important chip conglomerates. And this is kind of a strange and weird and maybe worrying acquisition because the two companies have fundamentally different business models. ARM is a neutral technology provider that creates a single layer of computing. It designs CPUs and nothing more. Basically, any company can license their designs and make their own ARM CPUs, and any ARM CPU will basically run any software written for ARM CPUs. ARM has been a pretty fair and reliable partner so far, and everyone from Qualcomm to Huawei and Apple on the smartphone side, but lately even data center companies like Amazon have relied on them. And that neutrality is kind of in danger with NVIDIA for two reasons. First, NVIDIA does not focus on a single layer. It is a vertically integrated company and its business model is much like that of Apple. It likes to create the hardware and the software that runs on top of it as well. So the GPU and the software platform on it, like CUDA, for example. And while NVIDIA CEO Jensen Leather Jacket Huang in his public announcement letter said that they would keep ARM neutral when he was asked by his own investors in a call later on, he said that NVIDIA's primary reason for acquiring ARM was to build out their own chips and their own software layer on top, which puts neutrality at risk. And other than that, NVIDIA is of course a US company and that means that ARM licenses are suddenly subject to Trump revoking them at will. According to Jensen, 22 billion devices were made using ARM CPUs last year alone, which makes it by far the most popular CPU type ever and a huge deal. As I explained in this video of mine, ARM China is a separate legal entity from its parent company, ARM Holding, and the two are currently in a big legal dispute. So it's unclear how easy it would be to actually withhold licenses in China, for example. But clearly, this is just more firepower for Trump to tighten the noose around the neck of Huawei and whichever company it dislikes next. Okay, and my win of the week will be Facebook's AR glasses project, and in particular, their research device prototype called Project Aria. And I hate Facebook as much as any self-respecting person would, but I think they have looked at Google's failed attempt with Glass and have learned to avoid the three key mistakes Google made there. First, Glass looked like a dorky gadget made by a tech company, not like a sleek fashion piece. Second, it didn't do much. And third, people were freaked out about having other people running around with cameras on their faces that could be secretly recording without anyone knowing about it. So Facebook is trying to fix all of those by rolling out their glasses very slowly, very deliberately over multiple years. At first, they'll have a hundred specially trained Facebook employees wear this research device around, which doesn't have a display yet and only collects data for now. And the company has announced a weirdly specific list of privacy precautions for it. So for example, the device will indicate when they are collecting data. There is a list of sensitive places where they can't record. Employees will have to wear special clothing describing what they do. All the faces and license plates will be automatically blurred, etc. It sounds kind of like how those street mapping cars work, except Facebook employees are the vehicles in this case. The second step Facebook has announced after this research project is their collaboration with Ray-Ban, which should result in a pair of actual glasses in 2021. And those will still come without a screen, so they'll be more similar to Snapchat spectacles than Google Glasses. And only in 2022 will the company actually get to doing what they wanted to do all along, which is full proper AR glasses. And I think this staged rollout really helps them with all three issues that Google Glass has faced. First, it lets them collect a lot of data and start building what the company calls a live maps, which is basically their 3D map of the entire world that will let them build a ton of applications by the time consumers get it. 
Second, it gets people used to the idea of seeing other people with cameras on their faces. It feels weird for now, but I guarantee, just like people got over having always on listening microphones in their homes in a few years, if you just keep showing anything to people for long enough, they'll eventually think it's normal. And third, it gives Facebook the time to make something with Ray-Ban that hopefully looks and feels more desirable than this, or this, or any pair of smart glasses for that matter. I personally hope that these glasses will fail because I really don't want Facebook to succeed at anything, but unless Apple succeeds in blowing us away with magical Apple glasses, it sure looks like Facebook is on a path to AR and VR dominance. Hey, uh, Editing Martin here from the future. Literally, as I was hitting export on my video, I saw that news broke that Trump has actually banned TikTok completely in the United States. It'll be banned from the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store starting Sunday together with WeChat. So I've put links to the updated articles down in the description. Keep that in mind as you watch the next segment. Okay, and my fail of the week will have to be the absolute mess that is the TikTok sale, transaction, theater, I'm not sure what the right word for it is, but it keeps getting worse. If you haven't heard yet, Microsoft, who was supposedly the clear frontrunner for buying TikTok's US operations, first made a very salty announcement on Sunday, saying that TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, decided not to sell the company after all. So the first rumors were that Oracle would then get to buy TikTok, but that didn't happen either, because apparently, according to the Financial Times, TikTok isn't getting sold, at least not according to this proposal they're making. Instead, a new legal entity would be set up in the United States that would own and run TikTok's American operations, of which Oracle would become a minority shareholder. And that entity would then give Oracle a contract to basically run their servers with all the US user data on it. Software development would still be partially handled by Chinese parent company ByteDance, who would remain the majority shareholder, and the magical algorithm wouldn't be given to anyone, meaning that ByteDance would still be able to decide what content gets shown where. Oh, and in case you're wondering just how great of a steward Oracle would be of your precious user data, well, guess what? The CEO of Oracle has said multiple times that he is a fan of the NSA, and he thinks that the US government should basically have access to all of your user data anyway, because what's the point of privacy? So things are looking up. Now, if you don't enjoy being a little pawn in the big games of billion dollar tech companies and governments who are playing 3D chess with your user data, with your video recommendations, with your ad preferences and who knows what else, well, guess what? Neither do we, the creators, which is why we built a platform where we cut all of those people out and we just have you, the viewers and us, the creators. We call it Nebula, and it's a beautiful video streaming platform built and owned by hundreds of educational creators, including me, Polymatter, Tearzoo, Mustard, Wendover Productions, Low Spec Gamer, and more. It's our corner of the internet where we don't have to worry about demonetization, upsetting the magical YouTube algorithm, invading your privacy, or anything else, and can just focus on making content for you, while you can just focus on the content instead of the endless barrage of ads. My videos from both of my channels are up on Nebula, completely ad-free, of course, and the ones from TechArt are even release a day early there. Nebula has lots of great originals, including a brand new podcast section, but also loads of fantastic video originals from the likes of Mustard, who explores Soviet engineers turning fighter jets into business jets, or the fascinating story of oversized Imperial Japanese aircraft carriers, for example. And access to Nebula comes for free with a subscription to my sponsor, CuriosityStream, which itself is 26% off right now. So you can get both services for just over a dollar a month. CuriosityStream is, of course, the premier place on the internet for high quality professional documentaries from the founders of the Discovery Channel, and they have a huge library of science, nature, and history content to binge while you're stuck at home. I'm currently watching Cyber War on CuriosityStream, which is a documentary on hackers and governments doing nasty things, because apparently that's just the world we're living in right now. And there's tons of other great content here from hosts like David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Stephen Hawking, and more. So check them out at the link in the description, and I'll see you next week.